Hello everyone, this is Know Your Mac on YouTube.com and welcome to another episode of Beginner Web Design. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using jQuery in our website. And in the next few tutorials, we'll talk about more jQuery methods and what ex exactly we could do with it. So here we have a basic page that we've been working with and we just have a simple paragraph in our body and we want to add some more JavaScript functionality. Now what we've learned in JavaScript is great so far. We can edit the CSS of elements and we can hide them and show them. We can change the text of elements like we did in the last episode, but there's a lot more out there for us to do. Unfortunately with JavaScript, we have certain limitations. Like if you want to select an element and tell JavaScript to do something to that element, you almost always have to give that an ID. So that JavaScript can use get element by ID to actually identify which object you're talking about. But we have different situations in uh, web design where we don't have, or it's impossible to have one ID for an element or group of elements. So if we want to do something to 20 different paragraphs at the same time, we would have to either give each one of those paragraphs a different unique ID, or we just couldn't do it at all. And if you want to do anything beyond that, like selecting, uh, let's say, all paragraphs on a page, it's just really clumsy and difficult in regular JavaScript. So jQuery is what's called a JavaScript library, and it adds a bunch of different features and functions to JavaScript that we can take advantage of. Now, millions of websites use jQuery. It's used by Google and Netflix, tons of different websites. It's just really versatile, and you can use it in any website you're, you're working with. So in order to get jQuery onto your website, it's a really simple process. So you want to go into your web browser and go to jQuery.com. And then on the right, you can hit this download button. You want to make sure that production is selected here. There's two different downloads, production and development. Development is nice, clear, readable code that you can even learn from if you wanted to. It's also commented so you can see exactly what does what and you could kind of understand what's working with JavaScript here. However, you could see that that is multiple times larger than the production copy. It's 247 kilobytes versus 32 kilobytes. And that's because in the production copy, they've actually stripped it down, taken out all of the white space, the line breaks, the spaces, the tabs, the comments, everything has been stripped apart and then it's smushed back together so that it's a really small document. So if you just want to download this, you can click this button and I've just copied and pasted this into a new document. And you can see here I now have jQuery.js, which is all of this code. So of course we'll have to link this up into our HTML document to tell HTML that we're working with jQuery now. So in order to do that, it's just like uh, linking any other JavaScript document which we've done before, and I'm just going to type in jQuery.js because that's the name of the file. And you could see that I've placed that before our blank JavaScript file. And I've done that because jQuery is outlining all of these functions. So we want the browser to know about the functions before we actually start using them. So let's go ahead and move into our, our JavaScript document here. And let's start looking at the main jQuery syntax. So jQuery pretty much runs off of CSS selectors. So if just say we want to apply something to all paragraphs on a page, how would we do that? Well, it's actually really simple. The first thing we want to do is put in a dollar sign. And this dollar sign just tells jQuery that we're using a jQuery selector. It basically stands for jQuery. Next, we want to put two parentheses. And inside these parentheses, we want to put a string. And that string should be a CSS selector. So I get put in here P, and that means paragraphs. I could put in body if I wanted to select the body element. I could put in uh, a class name, like dot tabbed if there were elements with that class. I can put in any ID. Uh, really anything, it's incredible what you can do with this. Even if you wanted to select 
maybe all paragraphs that were inside a div. You could do div p. Really anything that works in CSS you can use here with this jQuery selector. So I'm going to go ahead and select this uh, p element again because I have a p on our page. And next in jQuery, you want to apply different methods to that object. So you would just put a period here and then whatever you want to do to this object. So different methods would go here. And I'll tell you about those methods and what they are in just a second. But first, there is sort of a problem with this code. And that is that when JavaScript is running, it's going to try to run all of this code as soon as possible. And it's actually going to try to run this code and apply these methods before this HTML even gets loaded in. Because you could see that this script is being called before we actually tell the browser about this P element. So we want to tell JavaScript that it should not do any of this until the entire document is done rendering. So in order to do that, we're just going to make a simple function here, just like that. And we're just going to add a little bit more to it. So before the function, we're going to put this dollar sign to symbolize jQuery, put an open parentheses, and then at the end of the, the function here, we're going to put a closing parentheses and a semicolon. And that you just need to nail into your head. Just remember that little snippet of code. If you can remember this, you're good to go because that is all that is required for jQuery. As long as anything that you want to do is within this function, you'll never have any problems with the browser not knowing about these elements. So now let's go ahead and type in this uh, P selector again. And now let me show you an example of one method we could use, which is called hide. So we would type hide here. And then at the end of all our jQuery methods, we want to put an opening and closing parentheses, just like with the function, and then a semicolon at the end because it's the end of a line. Now we're going to go ahead and save this. And if we pop open this page and refresh it, you could see that it's gone because it is hidden by JavaScript. So hide is a, a sort of cool element because there's actually more things you could do with it. And you can actually specify uh, a time that JavaScript should hide this in. So I kind of phrased that confusingly. But if we put in uh, a number of milliseconds here, so I'll put in 3,000. And 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. So this means three seconds. And if we refresh this, you can see that it slowly goes away. And that's what the hide element does uh, in jQuery. So just to show you that a little bit better, I'll go ahead in my CSS and just give this a border just for the sake of showing you this. And you can see what JavaScript does is it actually it com basically compresses the object and animates its width and its height and its opacity all at the same time. Now, whether you want to use that or not is up to you, but hide is just an awesome little element that you can use if you'd like to. Now, in case you are wondering, there is an opposite to hide. There's also a show element. Uh, so let's give this 5,000. Now, this is not going to do anything because the element is already here. However, if we give this element display none in CSS, now you can see it animates in from JavaScript. Now there's a whole slew of different functions that you can use. There's also fade in and fade out. And it's just, it's really awesome all the different things that you can do in jQuery. You can see already we've started with these little animations, which really we weren't capable of doing in just plain JavaScript. So jQuery is definitely amazing and make sure you come back for the next tutorial where we'll really start to focus in on what we can do.